Welcome friends. In this video we're going to be making a bench just like this one from Chainsaw Lumber. In case you didn't already know, let me get you all caught up. So a giant poplar tree fell down on our neighbor's house. They've been kind enough to put up with me milling that up into big boards and you can watch a video of that shenanigans if you click on the icon here. To make a long story short, I wanted to say thank you by making a bench from chainsaw milled lumber. The poplar wood wouldn't do so well out in the elements though, so it's down to the bog with us and we're using this oak wood. As always with chainsaw milling, the first step is usually to get the log in a position that's going to be good for milling. That normally means getting it off the ground and angling it slightly so gravity's on your side while you're milling. That's some good passionate scrubbing. <laughs> Snedding off any little branches and cleaning off as much mud as possible is certainly worth doing. It's also worth considering debarking completely. In this case, we kind of wanted the aesthetic of the bark on there. And I know I say it in pretty much all my milling videos, but it's really worth making sure the straight edge is set up really securely. It's a lot safer and it'll just save you a lot of hassle later on if you get the first cut nicely accurate. I'm using a 120cm bar here and I found that it's always worth checking the tension of the chain round that with a few blips of the accelerator before you get going. In this case it was a bit loose so I stopped there to tighten it up. Another thing I think is really important when manoeuvring the saw on the mill around is to make sure the chain brake is always on. I basically keep the chain brake on at all times unless I'm actively cutting. Any little mishaps or missteps in the bog don't mean you're going to saw yourself in half that way. Anyway, let's get back to talking about the bench. So we've selected this log specially for the sides of the bench and you'll see exactly how we orient them later in the video but for now it was important which way we actually sawed into this so we were careful to orient it so we were kind of going through the branching off bit as well so it's really quite a wide cut at its widest point. I'll never get tired of the reveal with these things when you open them up just the art that's ready made there inside the log is just really cool to look at. Well, hey, I'm pleased. Looks <laughs> good to me. That's one side cut off and basically made. Now we're just sawing this down to a more manageable size, and that'll make the other side of the bench. It's really great having my now friend Robin here helping me. He was a subscriber here on YouTube but wanted to learn about chainsaw milling and came and hang out for a week and we made things and upcycled and made this bench as well. It was really great. Oh, Medulla ray tastic. That's uh... like brown there. It's like yeah. There, there'll be really like prominent medulla rays when it dries. One of the biggest challenges with milling stuff in this area is actually carting it back to the workshop and we've just got a quad and trailer to do that and luckily it's been relatively dry of late so we're actually able to escape the bog. With the sides all mowed up it's time to get busy on the back and the seat of the bench. <laughs> It's a 
This is one technique I really like for routing out channels without using an electric router, cutting lots of slots with a track saw or just a circular saw in general. You can get the depth nicely sort of set then and then easily break out the bits left over. Here I'm just tweaking the final width of this channel so that it can fit the seat that's going in it and you can do that really easily just by physically presenting the offcut we've got from the seat to the channel and that is a tight but pretty perfect fit and as we're not using any glue it can be really quite tight and we don't have to worry about the glue being scraped out of the joint Me. not for the first time it would have been really handy to have a three inch or more depth of cut track saw but you can just about manage by taking one full depth and flipping it over, taking another and then cutting the rest out with a handsaw. Here we are marking it up and just so you know this could have been really simple but we wanted to make this bench sort of open faced and with the sides angling outwards as well and you'll see what that means later on but essentially it necessitated lots of complicated compound angled cuts. <laughs> so at this stage we're realizing that it really is quite a big heavy bench especially with this oak being wet the seat that we're cutting up and putting on here is about three inches thick a foot and a half wide and about six foot long well you wouldn't want to be on a super slouch you wouldn't want to be upright either it's super cool having the bench with all curved and wiggly natural edges but it does mean that you basically have no flat reference edges which makes working out some of the angles tricky and you can see the long straight edge we're using there and that's basically like the line of best fit that we draw along and then measure the angles from that. It can be really useful just for conceptualizing this kind of thing just to imagine it as a straight board sometimes. To flatten off the mortises on the back of the half round, which is the back of the bench, we just used some spacers off the workbench and used the same trick with the track saw to get the depth of cut consistent and with lots of channels which can then be easily chiselled out. And it's the same deal with these mortises here. The plunge bit is the only tricky part of this and having to cut very slightly backwards towards the the close edge of the mortise. It's like textbook kickback territory so you really have to have your whole weight and be completely in control of the saw when you're doing it. Breaking out the remaining wood is similar to the other channels it's just a question of hacking up both ends first before you kind of break them against the grain. Just as a little point of interest the bits that are left over are really excellent at starting fires so it's worth saving them. You can see there I was routing, that's a way to get a perfectly flat bottomed mortise that you can't really get with chisels and I just thought I'd show Robin that one as well just so he could see both ways.
that was we can put some legs on, but also to drill through there, so we have some exactly middling, exactly centered decking screws. Slightly long but blunt drill bit. <laughs> I don't think any glue is really going to work, which is why the decking screws are coming in. But you rely on like the mechanical geometry of these joints to stop things coming apart. Personally, I typically love the texture of chainsaw mill finish. It's like there's just this really tactile, sensuous, furry sort of thing. As long as it's not got any big gouges in it, I love it. But somewhere along the line, this kind of shenanigans happened. So we're just going to see if we can't clean up that just a little bit with the orbital sand dust. Fellas, I'm ready to get up and do <laughs> so it's time to see what the neighbours make of this monstrosity and they're quickly out <laughs> to see it as soon as we get it over there especially when we topple it over in their lawn area I knew it wouldn't be very stable as it didn't have the legs yet they're yet to bolt on but many hands make light work and we soon get it into place and they really seem to like it so I'm pretty damn happy I absolutely love hearing from you guys so please do get in touch down below, let me know what you're making with chainsaw milled lumber, what you would have done differently, I'm sure you guys have got some cool improvements, or just to say hello. Friends thanks for watching, I think that made a pretty cool bench, now let's just sort this mess out. Uh, <laughs>